Now let's talk about dividends. <clears throat> a company is not legally required to pay dividends. But once they are declared by the board of directors, a legal liability is created. Cash dividends must be declared by the board of directors before they can be legally paid. The company should have sufficient cash and retained earnings to pay the dividend. So let's look at some of the transactions that occur around cash dividends. On January 5th, 2016, the Board of Directors of Matrix Incorporated declares a cash dividend of $1 per share on 500,000 shares of common stock outstanding. The dividend is payable to stockholders of record on February 5th and will be paid on March 5th. The January 5th, 2016, date of declaration is when a liability is recognized. Retained earnings is debited and dividends payable is credited for the $500,000. That is 500,000 times $1 dividend per share. The liabilities increase and the retained earnings increase by 500,000 on the horizontal model. The process of paying a dividend begins with the board of directors declaring the dividend. They'll declare the dividend and define a date of record and a date of payment. On the date of record, it is noted who all owners of the stock are, and those are the individuals who will be remitted the dividend on February 5th, regardless of what transfers of ownership occur in between. On the date of record, <clears throat> February 5th, there is no entry. This is a data gathering date. This is to allow the corporation to create the adequate list so they could begin distribution and complete it on the date of distribution on March 5th. Now on March 5th, 2013, the payment date, the dividends payable is debited and cash is credited for the $500,000 that is remitted to the stockholders at a rate of $1 per share for the 500,000 shares of common stock that are outstanding. Assets and liabilities will decrease by $500,000 on the horizontal model. Cash dividends are not the only type of dividend. There are stock dividends. A stock dividend is a distribution of additional shares of stock to stockholders. There is no change in the par value of the stock or in the total stockholders' equity. Stockholders retain the same percentage of ownership in the company based off their preemptive right. Companies will often distribute stock dividends to preserve cash Decrease the market price because the larger the quantity of stock there is available, the lower the market price of the stock. Or to reduce their retained earnings. Now you might be thinking, why would somebody want to reduce the market price of their stock? They may want to do this in order to make their stock more attractive to a wider audience. When stock prices begin to climb and they get too high, the audience or the participants, the people that will purchase that stock, fall in number. Now, there are two kinds of stock dividends. There's the small stock dividend and the large stock dividend. A small stock dividend consists of less than 25% of the outstanding shares and is recorded at current market value. 
a large stock dividend. Stock dividends comprised of more than 25% of the outstanding shares is recorded at par value or stated value of the stock. So let's continue to take a look at Matrix, who on my, May 10th, 2016, declares and distributes a 2% stock dividend on its 500,000 common shares outstanding. Par value is $1 per share, and the current market value is $17 per share. Retained earnings will be debited for $170,000. That is $500,000. 1,000 shares times 2% for 10,000 shares that will be issued times the market value of the shares at $17 a piece. Common stock is credited for 10,000. That is 500,000 shares times 2% times $1 par value. And then the additional paid in capital is credited for the difference of $160,000. Remember, this is a small stock dividend, so we are using market value. On May 10th, 2016, <clears throat> this particular entry for the stock dividend with a 2% actually keeps stockholders equity at the exact same amount. We re reduced retained earnings by 170,000, but we increased common stock by 10 and additional paid in capital by 160,000. Now, something else that may occur is a stock split. This increases the number of shares of stock that are outstanding and decreases the par value per share. There is no change in total stockholders' equity, and there is no journal entry that is required. So for example, if you had one share at $10 par value, you would then have two shares of $5 par value. Again, a company may do this in order to <clears throat> drive down their market price by increasing the number of shares that are in the market. Again, using Matrix, who has 300,000 shares of $1 par value common stock outstanding before a two-for-one stock split. Before the split, the total par value is 300,000. 300,000 shares times $1. After the split, the number of common shares increases to 600,000. 300,000 times two, and the par value decreases to 50 cents per share. That is $1 divided by two. The total par value remains at $300,000. FASB defined the term comprehensive income or loss as including all non-shareholder changes in equity. A new category of stockholders' equity referred to as accumulated other comprehensive income or loss was established to include the items that follow. Each is reported net of related income taxes. Cumulative foreign currency translation adjustments. Unrealized gains or losses on available for sale investments. Changes during the period in certain pension or other post-retirement items. And gains or losses on certain derivative instruments. Be aware that this account exists and that these are the things that it gathers. Now, sometimes a company will repurchase its own stock. When that happens, the number of shares outstanding 
will decrease by the amount of the purchase and is recorded in a treasury stock account. This is a contra equity account. Remember that when you hear contra, that means the normal regular balance is opposite that of where it typically sits in the balance sheet. So for example, on July 25th, Matrix repurchases 5,000 of its common shares in the open market for $30 per share. We create a debit of 150,000, so 30 times 5,000 shares to the treasury stock account and the corresponding credit is recorded in the cash account. Assets and equity will both decrease on the horizontal model. Treasury stock is entered on cost basis. So it is what we pay for it. <clears throat> now that treasury stock may have been purchased because the organization felt that currently the market value of their stocks is undervalued. As that market value increases, perhaps they choose to resell some of those shares. If the treasury stock is resold, the sale increases equity and the treasury stock account will decrease. Using Matrix Incorporated, who resells 2,000 shares of their treasury stock in the open market for $35 per share. Cash will be increased for the $70,000 that is received. That is 2,000 shares times $35. Treasury stock will be credited for 60,000. This is the 2,000 times the $30 cost per share that we, we reacquired it at. An additional paid in capital is credited for the $10,000 difference. Our assets increase and our equity increase by $70,000 on the horizontal model. Here we're showing the horizontal model Uh, that we will see often representing the information regarding the statement of changes in stockholders' equity. Now, you'll notice here that we have values that are not solely just dollars. We have definitions and numbers along with the dollars. So don't automatically assume everything is a dollar in a financial statements packet. Sometimes we have to add additional disclosure, such as quantities of something. It is appropriate that the reasons for the changes to any stockholder's equity account during a fiscal period be presented in the balance sheet and a separate statement of changes of stockholder's equity or in the notes to the financial statements. So here you're seeing a chart as a separate statement of changes in the stockholder's equity. We have the beginning amounts. We have the things that may have occurred and where they apply. And then we will have balances in number of shares, in treasury stock and its value both. The non-controlling interest is often something that really throws people. A non-controlling interest is also known as a minority interest. It is the portion of equity in a subsidiary company that is not attributable to the parent company or the company whose financial statements that you are dealing with. <coughs> oh. 
Gap requires that a certain level of ownership in a subsidiary organization results in a consolidation of the financial statements. So with their assets added and their liabilities added uh, and their stockholders equity added to the sums of the parent company. Now all the stockholders equity does not actually belong to the parent company. We also need to expand and illustrate the amounts that belong to another organization. Sole proprietors, single owner and partnerships do not issue stock. You're going to deal a lot with proprietorships and partnerships early in a career. Capital accounts record investments by the owners and then drawing accounts record the distributions to the owners. Distributions are similar to dividends. Net income and drawing accounts are transferred to the capital accounts at the end of the period. So Mary West's drawing account of $20,000 will close to her capital account at the end of the accounting period. So she would then have a reported capital account with a net $230,000 in it. Owners' equity in not-for-profit and governmental organizations are referred to as fund balances. Individual resource providers do not have specific claims against an organization's assets in this case. We've now talked a lot about different stockholders' equity issues and we'll continue moving forward through the various options of your the company and look farther into some of the other aspects including in some of you the managerial concepts that you addressed in ACC 122